Uh, I'm Greg Matulionis. Uh, I'm a general contractor. I didn't have a dog when I was growing up. I, I kind of had a fear of dogs. Uh, I had gotten bit when I was a kid. It just wasn't anything I wanted to have as a pet. It actually started 24 years ago. Uh, I got married to my wife, Barb, and she's a dog lover for, uh, for probably 10 years. You know, every couple of weeks, you know, I'm getting a tug on my sleeve. Honey, can we get a puppy? Honey, can we get a puppy? And it's like, mm, no. Barb sourced and figured out what dog was the best breed for us, and, and the Australian Shepherd is what, what came up. She had showed me yet another picture. It's this cute little Australian puppy, and she's like, look at this one. That breed is a really smart, high energy dog, and that's what I wanted. If I ever wanted a dog, I wanted to be a responsible pet owner, and I wanted a, a dog that I could train. I said, okay, let's go get her. We went the next day, in uh, December 24th, and she was our Christmas puppy. Yeah, this was her puppy, and then, and then things changed. <laughs> the moment I knew I was in trouble with falling in love with this puppy was her first bath. She just was relaxed, and she let me give her a bath, and then it was dryer off time, and then it was nap time, and then I just looked back in the crate, and I, I knew that she needed me. Remember, I'm not a big dog fan, and so I'm, but at this point, I'm said I'm all in. I really didn't have any, I had no experience with dogs, so I didn't know anything. Uh, we found a, a professional dog trainer. We, we engaged our trainer, Karen, really just within weeks. I invested a lot of daytime hours, nighttime hours, and evening hours, because that's the investment I wanted to make into my dog. I wanted a responsible dog that would go with me and trust me explicitly. As a result of me doing so much training with Coda, that's where our bond was created. Considering everything that I do with my dog is all about training, it doesn't mean that it's boring. It's always about fun and it's always about positive reinforcement. Wanting to challenge my dog's mental capacity, I started training her to wear a harness that eventually led to her pulling a wagon. So every time we put the harness on, it was a big party, got lots of treats. Same thing with the wagon. I introduced the wagon to her. We rolled it around on the ground. She got treats so that it wasn't this scary thing. And eventually, she started pulling the wagon around. And we went to some events that uh, people were working, doing yard work. It was a volunteer group. And I filled the wagon with bottles of water. And Coda and I roamed around the parking lot delivering water to people. I taught her how to take a dollar bill, or, or any money, and, and put it in a bucket. We would go and do fundraisers. The deal I made the, the person walking by was, if you give my dog a dollar, I'll guarantee you she'll put it in that bowl. We raised a lot of money. She carried a basket with anything you put in it and would deliver it to anywhere you asked her to. She was competitive obedience. She was a therapy dog. She was a Frisbee dog. Countless tricks. I had nine pages of things that she knew that I had to keep track of. She uh, was featured in a national TV program. We did numerous fundraisers. She was responsible for starting a Pet Photos with Santa fundraiser event. Over the course of nine years, we raised probably about $30,000 for that, for that shelter. One of our biggest adventures, we traveled and took her to all 48 states. 68,000 miles of driving with my dog, who was my co-pilot in the front seat, who took the front seat and wouldn't give it to my wife. Every state line we crossed, we'd stop, take her picture, and I started to develop this map of the United States that ended up on the side of our RV. It was amazing, the conversation starter, because so many people are on vacation without their dog, and they could love on our dog, that kind of reminded them of their dog at home. She experienced 27 national parks. She's been to Old Faithful four times. She's been to the Grand Canyon three times. So I'm always looking for what's the next adventure. I've been an avid repeller with a local organization. Uh, we've traveled all over the United States, repelling some of the highest drops in the world. Um, I've always taken my dog with me to these, to these places, but I said, how can I take this to the next level? Is this something I can do with my dog? So I used all my techniques of positive reinforcement training 
to, to teach Coda that putting the harness on was fun. If I praise you as a person, it makes you feel good, so you want to do more of that same thing. Same, same thing with dogs. Coda was an extraordinary dog. She learned that, hey, this is fun to do. One thing led to the next, and she's going with me everywhere I go to repel. She quickly became a fixture at numerous events. Uh, I gave demonstrations at the Cincinnati Museum Center inside the terminal. Uh, I would climb with her to the top and rappel back down with her. And what that did is it gave people an opportunity to ask questions to me about, well, why do you do this? My always my answer was, it's a way that I can illustrate to people how they can build a bond with a dog to do anything they want to do together. One event that I spent nine years working on was to rappel North Dakota at the New River Gorge Bridge. And it's one of the highest rappels in the eastern part of the United States. It's an annual event. The director of the event's like, mm, I'm just not sure how the public is gonna see this. I think they're gonna see it as a stunt. I had to demonstrate that Coda was comfortable with rappelling in order to begin the process of even being considered. I was given a note Christmas of 2017 that said everything was in order and approved for her to rappel in October of 2018. I read this note and I started crying because it was a kind of a crescendo of you know, all the training that you know, my friends helped me with for her to love doing this so much. The news media was there, the newspaper was there, all my friends were there to support you know, this activity. Uh, this isn't a stunt. This is a demonstration of a bond and how deep it can be between a boy and his dog. She filled a place in my heart. It was something I never experienced. I didn't even know existed. Most dogs, depending on the breed, live 10 to 12 to 15 years. I certainly didn't let that overshadow anything, but as she aged, there became a reality to this that she is getting older. She's slowing down. There was a point that I suspected something was, was not right, and I knew. I felt something was wrong with her. We did tests and, you know, the vet said she's probably just getting older and just settling down and just the natural progression. She's just getting older. A reality set in that this might be the beginning of the end. Four weeks later, I was back at the vet saying, you know, just something just doesn't seem right. And we had planned a vacation to finish up her map because we had five states left to complete CODA's 48 states. I knew on that trip in our small RV that this was the last time. When we got back in mid-May, she started to frequently not eat. Missing meals became more and more frequent. We got a phone call that the vet said, the liver is really, really far gone. I knew that I had to make a decision and I knew she wasn't getting any better. She looked at me and she said, I'm done. That afternoon, we made arrangements with an organization that comes to euthanize your pet at home. So we took Coda for a ride in the RV because it was her happy place. It's six o'clock that evening, the uh, folks came and we put her down in her happy place. There's no easy way. There's nothing you can say to make the hurt go away because it, it's a profound loss. It's, a, it's part of your family. It's true time heals wounds and what you have left is, is the memories. Part of my grieving process was to look at the pictures that I have. I'm gonna pull together the photographs, I'm gonna go to one of these online places and make a book. All the adventures, all the places, all the people, all the things that we've done, I wanted a place to put that. This book is the summary of a relationship that was unimaginable. I couldn't dream of something like this between a man and his dog. And I always, as I was going through the process of thinking about another dog, I was like, I was kind of turned to, I could get another dog and, and I could train her to be just like Coda and I had to let that go because there's not another Coda, but there is the next dog. 
six months after uh, Coda's passing, my wife had showed me, yet again, a picture of a puppy. And I wanted to find a name that had meaning for me and also for my wife. Independently of one another, my wife and I found the same name, Asa, which is a Hebrew word for healing. She's the beginning of the next adventure. I don't know where that's gonna take us, but I'm all in.